Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Rafael and I will be reviewing the first ever season of Drag Race España. Y hola a todos los que están mirando el video. Yo soy Rafael y yo voy a estar reviewing la primera temporada de Drag Race España. And I just want to say right from the beginning that I love this series already. Everything from the queens, the humor, the challenge, the runway. Everything was great and I am so looking forward to what this season has to offer and what the queens have to offer as well. It seems like Wild Present said, fuck Drag Race Down Under, we're gonna give all the budget to Drag Race Spain because Drag Race Down Under, if y'all haven't seen my review, go check it out, but that's a flaming hot mess going downhill and Drag Race España is here to hopefully save everything because this is good. This is production. This is a show. And the queens are competing for 30,000 euros, which I'm not sure how much that translates into US dollars, but nonetheless, they are competing for 30,000 euros and they are competing for a crown and they are also competing for a makeup line called Cash Cosmetics, I believe, and they're gonna get a year's supply of that. And the first queen to walk on to Drag Race España for the very first time is, I believe her name is Aranca Castilla de, de la Mancha, and she is 23 years old and she calls herself the Hannah Montana of drag. <laughs> so I love her energy. She came in with a blow dryer and I see that she's going to be very known for her laugh because that's what she keeps doing. And she said that everything in life is much better when you have a silly laugh. And I do agree. I mean, we all have silly laughs. So I love her energy and I love her positivity. She's so giggly. And as for her outfit, it was pretty okay. I thought it was all right. I, I could do without those boots, but it was okay. I mean, I could see what she's going with the whole Hannah Montana cowboy aesthetic. And I feel like that hair with the bang with the long white hair is going to be probably her signature look, if I'm not mistaken, because that's what she was showing in her promo look and then that's what she walked in. So maybe that's her signature look. And then the second queen to come in, Sagataria. She comes in and she's 22 from Barcelona and she came in looking amazing. She's 22 and her makeup is perfection. Like the eyeshadow was so good. The only thing I didn't like about her outfit was that you can see her nipples in, and it wasn't really fully formed on her body. I think if it was a little bit smaller maybe or a little bit more fitted, it would have been good, but I still think she looked flawless. And I wonder, since her name is a play on Sagittarius, like the sign, uh, I wonder if she took inspiration from Aquaria from season 10 of US Drag Race because her entire look is very similar to Aquarius. I'm not saying that, you know, she's copying or anything, but she's very similar to it. And I wonder if she took some inspiration from her. Either way, she still looked flawless. I love it. She also starts shading Aranta right away, saying, oh, I, I don't remember her look in the confessional, saying, um... I don't remember. I mean, she genuinely probably didn't remember, but I mean, <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And then the third queen comes in and her name is Hugaxio Crujenta and she's 25 from Valencia and she perfection as well. I'm telling you, these queens did not come to play. They came to slay. She looks so good. She has such a unique look where I had to replay it a couple times because I'm like, wait, there's so much to take in and so much to look at. It's like a bunch of random parts to fashion all put together and that's what she says she likes to be. She likes to be a hot mess, but make it fashion. And then the next queen to come in, Fish. <laughs> Carmen Ferrala, she's 31 and she's from Sevilla. She comes in and she looks, oh my God, she looks supermodel. She's ready for a runway. Everything about her looked perfect. <laughs> like she came in strutting, like she looks so good. And she had her inspired Versace outfit that she said that she made it, it looks like Versace. It's kind of sold like Versace, even though it's not real Versace. It's kind of fake Versace, but she thinks it's real Versace because she made it. So I think we're pretty sure that she's a fan of Versace. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Carmen already, like right away. And I love her confessional. She is hilarious. I just want to see her run out of the ocean in slow motion. She looks that damn good. And the next queen is Poopy Poison. She's 38 from Madrid and she also has such a nice vibe and energy to her. Her outfit, I'm not sure. Her outfit, she came in yodeling and I wasn't sure I was a fan of the outfit. It was okay, I would give it a pass. It wasn't my favorite, but she looked good. And she came in mixing with the other queens and she's all excited and saying that she doesn't know if, the dra if you could be friends with drag queens because you know, you have to watch your back out against them. And Carmen right away says, oh, you try to look nice. And it's like, oh, oh bitch, you wanna, you wanna try that already. So Carmen's already, Carmen and Sagittaria is already seeming like they were gonna be 
the bitches of the season. I'm completely okay with it and I'm completely here for it <laughs> because they are hilarious with it. It's not like they're trying to be nasty about it. And then Poopy snaps back at her. Oh, you look very tan. You look very orange almost. And Killer Queen comes in and she is 31 from Madrid. I loved her entire aesthetic to her look. She works in the hospital outside of drag and I loved her aesthetic to her whole look. It had the little crosses on the sides and she came in looking like a pandemic Power Ranger. She had the mask, the blue hair. This was a look. This looked expensive. It's very interesting how I don't think we have had a drag queen like that that works in the hospital field, but also does drag. So it's very interesting. I mean, you could be giving CPR one second and doing a death drop the next. So you know, since she's a doctor, she's okay if she loses the competition. She still got money. Soy doctora. E. The next queen who comes in, her name is Dovima Nurmi, and she's 24 and she's from Barcelona. And she comes in so mysterious and so cold and just, she looks so good in her look. I love the entire thing. In her confessional, she also says she relates more to evil characters, which is something I understand because I love the evil characters in Disney movies and anything. Why be good when you could be bad? And she comes in and Sagataria is quickly making faces like, oh, ugh, okay, like. And then, so Davima goes over there, introduces herself to the queen. And there's so much tension. They're like the new Alyssa versus Coco, Montreal, because there's so much tension and they're like, oh, I know her and we got in, into fights before because they live together. And she said that she has not started any of the fights that Sagataria has started all of them. And the queens are like, well, just stay away from each other. It's okay, we don't all have to get along. And she's like, it's better that I know the devil than be around. And I'm just like, ooh, like very interesting. Like, so I wonder, What's that about? Like, what happened and what's the backstory? Did they know that they were gonna be on the show together? Or how did they cast them coincidentally? Like, did they know that they had beef? Her energy could have been a little bit more higher, but I hope seeing Stagataria didn't like completely throw her off, which I feel like it did. I feel like she walked in with a positive attitude maybe. And as soon as she saw her, everything went out the window, but we'll get to it. And then Inti comes in and Inti is 20 years old from Bolivia. And she is an indigenous queen, and she said that her drag represents the futuristic version of indigenous people if they were still alive, which I was kind of confused by what she meant by that because aren't indigenous people still alive? So I'm confused unless something went over my head, but correct me if I'm wrong. But her look, I love it. I need her entire red look with the wig, everything. I need that purse also in my closet right away. And for 20 years old to like have that all in her head already and have like a, a look like that already styled out, that's impressive. And she also comes in throwing something saying, your dad forgot this. <laughs> and Carmen says, well, what did she throw? I think those were her dad's underwear with a Spain flag on it. <laughs> Carmen is hilarious. <laughs> then Drag Volcano comes in and she is 30 from Las Palmas. And she comes in looking like a fashionable porcupine. She's on these stilts, I think they are. In her promo look, she also had those stilts. So I wonder what they're made of. If I could see what's inside it, it would be interesting. Her makeup was good. I wonder if that outfit, if you touch it, if it hurts or if it stabs you. She's a skyscraper compared to the other queens, especially Poopy. She's like right next to her and she's just looking down at her like, hey Poopy, hey girl. And Poopy's just all the way down there. Like she's so down there, she's probably in Drag Race down under visiting and saying hi. Damn, this bitch is tall, especially in those stilts. I wonder if that's her only shoe that she's gonna wear throughout the season. Or are we gonna get like a classic stiletto or something else? And then the last queen to walk into the workroom is the Macarena. And she's 29 from Cadiz. And she looks so good. Listen, y'all, everybody's look was amazing when they walked in. I'm sorry, but everybody's look was amazing. All the queens knew the assignment. She comes in though. Finally, a bitch with snacks. She comes in with pork rinds, AKA chicharron, and she's trying to give it to the other queen. I'm like, what? I mean, I would eat some with tortilla and some rice, but points for her for bringing that. She has such a good energy. Like, I'm so sad for like the results later on in the show. They're so excited to be there. It's just so much fun to watch them all interact with each other. She also says that her accent in Spanish isn't real. She's actually fluent in English and she proceeds to talk in English to us in her confessional. And those are the 10 queens competing on Drag Race España the first season. Also, that workroom is huge. Did y'all see that? It is like a huge ass room. Damn, they had money. They're all just screaming like a bunch of gays at a brunch. Supreme comes on TV and she explains to the queen, you are the first batch of queens for this season. And she's going down the stairs and she's like, I am Supreme, I am the host. She looks like a whole different person outside of drag. And the queens notice that too, like, wow, he's very dapper, very nice. And we're gonna find out what your first mini challenge is. 
and then all the queens run out. But I was kind of confused about this one because they run out, but they do they come back into the same workroom or was it a different room? I think it was the same workroom, if I'm not mistaken. It was just styled a little bit different. They put a huge mechanical bull in the middle of it and they took the tables out. But I could be wrong if I glanced at it too quickly. And also Carmen had me dying when she's like, La Pit Crew? What's La Pit Crew? <laughs> She's like, oh, you mean the handsome man. Here we need to talk Spanish. Let's not call it the pit crew. <laughs> and then we get to the mini challenge and we see one of the pit crew members on a mechanical bull in the middle of the workroom. And we see Supreme standing to the side and a photographer. So they're going back old school. And this is another big part that I love about this show. They went back with the photo shoot idea, which I've been wanting them to do forever again, where you have to do something or stand on something or, or in this case, ride something. And they're gonna take a picture of you. So they all, for the most part, did so well on it. It was so hilarious seeing them fly around. And it was very impressive how the thing didn't pop. I'm surprised it didn't pop where they didn't tell them to take the heels off because the heels were very pointy and it's like very bouncy. So one wrong mistake and poosh, the mini challenge is over. And then Carmen was the one that stood out and she actually won the challenge. She was so hilarious. She's probably gonna be one of my favorites. Like she really is. That bitch has it all. She was just riding the bull like a fashion model, just all in slow motion and everything. <laughs> and she wouldn't let go. And then the way she got onto the bull, it was so painful because she sat on her balls and then her balls started poking out from the back. <laughs> and then she was just being swung around and she wouldn't let go and her balls were just flying around as well. It was so, so good. So well done. Everybody else did good as well for the most part, but her stood out specifically and her picture actually came out looking really good. So good job, Carmen. And then Supreme announces to all the queens after Carmen has won that they could all go and de-drag and they all start slowly de-dragging. I'm like, oh shit, let me get my magnifying glass because I'm starting to get confused on who's who. I'm like, okay, you're Carmen, you're La Macarena. Okay, and who are you again? All we see is booty crack. I'm like, damn, my sister Gatari in the background. They don't censor anything here. <laughs> they had it all out on display. And then we had like a good 30 minutes on La Macarena untucking herself and taking out the surgical tape that she said is very painful. And the camera just stood on her for a good minute while she was just moaning and groaning and just digging into her crotch, just taking it out. And eventually she took it out. And then we move over to the conversation with Inti, Killer Queen, I believe, and the Macarena. And they're in front of the mirror and, and they're taking off their makeup. And the Macarena confesses to everybody that, oh, she has some body issues before the show, but she kind of got it together. She got some help for it. And she's better now. She feels more comfortable in her skin. So that's good. I love the body positivity right away from the very start on episode one. And the first maxi challenge of the season will be drag on a dime. So all the queens have to pick out one box that the pit crew members brings out and Carmen gets to choose first because she won the photo shoot on the bull. They all have to make an outfit out of the material or equipment inside these boxes. So Carmen chooses this specific box because she sees it has nice fabric and she's like, well, I'm not dumb. I almost died doing that bull. I'm gonna choose this box. And the judges for this season are Anna Gonzalez, Javier Ambrosi, and Javier Calvo. I'm not familiar with any of them, but I'm looking forward to seeing who they are in the show. And they also have another special guest who I personally thought that he was trying to impersonate Batman with his voice, but we'll get to that. And the queens start making their outfit out of all these different materials. And Zagatari is like, well, all I have is hula hoops. <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? And they're all starting to get intimidated by Killer Queen who gets right to work who's on the floor cutting. And Dovima's over here, she's kind of like, I don't belong here. I just, I just don't belong here. And I'm like, what's going on? You just got on the show. Like, what's the problem? Like, nothing has happened here. And I truly wonder if Sagittaria being there has really like threw her off completely because her energy is so down. She seems so negative about herself. And then Supreme goes into the workroom giving advice to each queen like, oh, maybe you should do this, maybe you should do that with your look and some of the queens are freaking out. And then he gets to the table with Sagittaria and Dovima and he finds out that they have some type of beef between them. And he asks them, oh, so are you gonna tell us what the issue is? And they're like, oh, well, maybe not now, just the teaser. So that part was a little cringy because it's, it's kind of like breaking the third wall, sort of. Like with Alyssa and Coco, we weren't that aware that what were they doing or if they were like stretching out their storyline to stay on the show longer. But here it was just like, oh, we're not gonna tell you everything because then we're gonna have a chance to be an eliminator right away once we tell all our tea. So it was kind of smart on their part, but it was a little cringy to watch. But nonetheless, Supposedly it was over a guy 
And I'm just like, yikes, like, what happened between them? And the Vima just seems so down. Like, she seems so upset and depressed to be on the show. Like, she is not fucking around with anybody. She just doesn't seem happy to be on the show, which I'm surprised. I'm like, you signed up for this. So maybe the cameras intimidated her as well. But then the queens come back the next day. And did y'all see that aerial shot from the workroom from above? It stressed me out. <laughs> It was a huge mess all over the floor. Like, I don't know how they worked through that. I would be freaking out the entire time. There is trash everywhere, fabric and a bunch of material. And it's just, it's just a mess. <laughs> and then NT brings up a good conversation of what do y'all think about the trans revolutionary and how times are changing and things are becoming more progressive. And four of them are non-binary. It's just so lovely seeing a conversation like this being taken seriously on a show like this and how it's very diverse with you never know who is coming through those workrooms and what kind of background they have. This is why I love that Drag Race is expanding to different places throughout the world because we get to see what kind of lifestyle everyone lives besides what they're usually sheltered to. And on top of that conversation, they also talk about parenting and moms and how some of their moms actually stopped talking to other moms because they were talking shit about their own child in front of them. And it's just like, that was very sad reality. Just imagine you as a young child, like doing certain things that are not normal to people or normal to parents. Like, oh, my little son wants to play with dolls or wants to wear little heels or whatever. And then other people are judging that so hard. So I kudos to these moms for having the strength to let go of those toxic relationships and giving their children what they want. Because some of them actually told us that, yeah, they were lucky and fortunate enough that my parents understood. My mom bought me these shoes as well as my sister because I wanted those shoes that my sister had and she bought them for me as well. So kudos to all those moms out there who are supportive of their children, who are so open-minded and don't think of their child as a freak growing up. Like, oh, you need to be in this box labeled boy. And you could expand from that, you know? And Supreme Deluxe comes out on the runway and it's runway time. She announces all the judges and she seems like she's in heat. <laughs> she's like throwing herself at each one of them. And the special guest judge of the week is John Carter Herna. And he's the one that I thought that sounded like Batman. Like, he sounded like he's whispering every time. Like, yes, I love this outfit. Yes, I love this look. No, I don't like this look. And Supreme Deluxe does an amazing job as being a host of this show. She's hilarious. She's warm. She's nice. She's very open with everything. And I love that. And her drag is very good. You would never think that that's her outside of drag. I'm like, it's two different people. So the category is drag on a dime. The first one up is Inti, and I wasn't sure how to feel about her look. I'm like, do I like it? Do I not? I was kind of mixed with it, and I, I don't think I like it. I think it's a little bit sloppy and too much on the bottom, but her hair and the headpiece was good. Her hair, the swirls, and then the little curtain hangers around her head, that was perfect. But the outfit itself was kind of, it was kind of like, meh, you know, it wasn't... It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. It was kind of just passable. Also, the runway theme song is Sissy That Walk, and I must say that song goes with everything. That should be the permanent runway song. I love it, so good choice with that. Arancha Castilla La Mancha, and her look was okay. I think that they were a little bit too easy with it. I thought it was very simple. I think she did the bare minimum, and the little bubble sold it to her, but I think her personality is what really sold the outfit to the judges and i think that that's what literally stopped her from being in the bottom three let alone the bottom two this week because i thought it was pretty simple compared to what the other queens were bringing i think she definitely got by with this first challenge with her persona but i'm not sure how long that's gonna last and the next look is Hugacio crujiente and she looked amazing that was that right there is fashion that is how you make junk into something fashionable. That was so good. I love the little mop hands that she had. And then when she dropped down and started cleaning the floor, that was so good. But I mean, that's what she was bringing when she first arrived into the workroom. So this does not shock me. I am very excited with her looks. I think she's gonna make it very far. Her makeup skill, amazing. Me gusta mucho. Era maravilla, era perfecta. Bueno. 
And then Killer Queen comes out and there's Mary Antoinette flower look. And I thought that was good too. I love the colors. I love the makeup, the hair, the purple, everything matched. I love the little purse that she had and she was throwing out flowers. I think she really sold it to us and make it look like it was expensive looking. And then Sagittaria comes out and she looks exactly like Aquaria. Am I the only one who sees it? I mean, you could just say she was relying on body and just being naked with like a couple hula hoops. But to make it into an outfit that was spinning around across her body and then how all those balls glued together that was impressive itself this whole outfit could be in a science museum like oh this is how the planets align they all just spin around this is what you call the world revolving around me you should have painted them into a bunch of planets like oh yeah the world revolves around me and it's spinning around me and I'm the center of the universe. That would have been such a good idea, but I love this look. This is probably one of my favorites. And the Macarena comes out giving a shower realness. And I don't think that this was as bad as the judges made it seem. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the best constructed, but I got the idea and the whole duck and the everything going on on her chest. I kind of saw what the judges were talking about, but I kind of saw it as a little past into next week's episode, but... And then Duvima Nudmi comes out, and I was not a fan of this look. I thought it was very sloppy. I kind of saw the look she was going for, and I'm like, do I kind of like this? But I was not a fan of it. I thought she looked like a spider going into a nightclub. And I definitely thought she deserved the bottom two for this because this was probably the worst look of the whole night. Her attitude and presence doesn't sell us the outfit either. She's just like, yeah, I'm bored. I don't feel like being here, so I'm just gonna do the bare minimum and hopefully I can get by. Poopy Poison comes out cleaning the floor and my favorite part of her look was her shoes, that they had a bunch of sponges on it. I'm like, how did you glue that so perfectly on? I thought it was a whole completely different shoe when I saw it in the workroom. But I thought this look was well. I thought it was well done and she sold it to us, especially with the cleaning. My other favorite part of the outfit was her little collar that she had up. Like, it was so interesting that she made that out of curtains. That was well constructed, and I, I like this look. And then Carmen comes out. Let's just have a moment for her outfit. Her outfit was amazing. I thought it was good. Maybe it's just because she's my favorite off the rip already. She constructed this outfit so, so well. I mean, she made pants. She made a bra, she made a little jacket, she made a headband, she made a purse. And she sold it to us as if it was a luxury item. And she was just walking around like, that bitch knows she's a model. Carmen knows she's that bitch, and she is that bitch. I think this look along with Hugasio's look were my favorite looks of the Who do y'all think that should have won the challenge? Should it have been Hugasio or should it have been Carmen or somebody else? I think the only thing that Carmen really has to work on is her makeup. I think she could learn how to do her makeup just a little bit better because the lighting as she was walking, it wasn't flattering to her face. It kind of made her look like somebody else. I'm like, ugh. And Drag Volcano comes out again in those still high heels. I really want to know what exactly is she stepping on or if she's walking into them with her toe pointed down. Or is it like an angle? I'm not sure. But either way, she looked good. My favorite part was the fringe purple hair that was all the way down to her feet. I thought she sold us the whole entire futuristic of drag look. So this one was good. I really love the runway and I'm glad that they actually started with Drag on a Dime on the first episode. I hope that as the season continues, they have more construction episodes because those are personally my favorite when they have to make trash or a certain material into outfits and I want to see another round of this to see what they have to bring again. And then we finally get to the first judging of the season and Arancha, NT, Killer Queen, and Drag Volcano are all safe. Again, I don't, I don't know about NT. I feel like she should have been in the bottom three, but I think that the reason why they let her go is because she kind of sold a supermodel when she was walking and her umbrella might have helped. But to me personally, I think that was not one of my favorite looks. And then the judges get to critiquing the queens who are in the bottom and in the top this week. And for the most part, I agree with their critiques. I definitely agree with Davima that she definitely has to be more confident and more aware that she's here on Drag Race España. Like not every queen gets a chance to be on the show and I'm not sure what's not clicking with her. Maybe there's something that she's holding back or she's not telling us. But that needs to be taken out the way because I feel like she has the potential to be a good queen. But again, that confidence is what's lacking. So hopefully the storyline with her and Sagittaria is not the only thing that's keeping her in the competition. And she actually breaks out of her shell at some point because I could see the potential in her. 
And all the queens go backstage and they're discussing, oh, who's gonna be in the bottom? Who's gonna be in the top? They think that Poopy's gonna be in the bottom. And the other thing that I found so hilarious were when the judges got to critiquing the queens just by the judges themselves, they were judging these queens as if they knew them for years. Like, do you think that she has enough charisma? Is she gonna be the winner though? I think she's missing this. Is she always gonna give the same thing on the runway? Is she always gonna be serving body? I'm not sure if she's actually winner material. Calm down, y'all don't even know these queens like that and y'all are judging them so hard. Like, it's the first runway. Maybe the critiques could get a little harsher like episode three, but damn. <laughs> and then we have the guest judge, Batman, over there saying, yes, I like Sagittaria. Yeah, she's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I like her. Yes, I want to take her outfit. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's so good. I love the mystery and thrill that he has in his voice. <laughs> and the winner of the challenge ends up being Hugasio Crujiente. And I must agree, I mean, it was a really close tie between her and Carmen. But I mean, Hugasio kind of brought it a little bit more, but they were both neck and neck. So I don't blame them, but I know Carmen was somewhere like, I'm gonna cut up this bitch's wig. But Carmen, you still look good though. You still look good. And then the bottom three end up being Poopy, Dovima, and the Macarena. And the Macarena is shocked that Poopy is not in the bottom two with her. And then the lip sync starts. The lip sync song is Sobre Vivir by Monica Naranjo. And they both end up starting very slow. The Macarena is giving us a little bit more at the beginning. And I'm like, okay, she's obviously gonna win the lip sync because Dovima has no energy. She has nothing going on for her so far. And then the Macarena, she kind of starts getting a little bit more excited and then she kind of loses all track as soon as the chorus hits and the Vima brings out some stick that I'm not sure where she took that out. It was probably one of those magic sticks and it expands and she started whipping it around and then she kind of started giving us something but not enough. And the Macarena, she tosses her head back and her wig flies off. I'm like, oh, that it's over. It, it was a it was a wrap and you can tell that it was just done and then it seems like she starts going in desperation mode and didn't know what to do and just was going all over the place tossing herself on the floor and the vima took control of the second part of the lip sync and i'm like ah oh, damn it the macarena you almost had it and the macarena ends up losing and it was so disappointing because i feel like she had so much more to give she has such a huge personality and I wanted to see it more. I honestly thought they were nobody was gonna go home this episode, but it was disappointing. The Vima stays, and I really hope they're not just keeping her along because they want to know what happens between her and Sagittaria and drama when they used to be roommates over the guy. I'm not sure if that's why they kept her. I'm like, mm -hmm. part of me is like, well, as soon as she was announced to be in the bottom two, I'm like, she's not going home. There's still a huge storyline that's missing, and if she was just to go home. Who's gonna explain that to us besides Sagittaria? But she's gonna give her one side of the story. So yeah, the Macarena went home and I was disappointed. I was really a big fan of her already. Who knows that she might come back for All Stars International. And that was the first episode, y'all. What did y'all think? I love Drag Race España. This is probably one of my favorite spinoffs now. I love the host, I love the queens, I love the production. Everything about it was good. And the first main challenge was amazing. I loved everything about it and it had me laughing the entire time and I think that that's what I enjoyed a lot about this compared to the recent spinoff which is Drag Race Down Under. That one has just had me like, what's going on here? Like, what is this? What are we doing? But this one so far, please don't let me down because this one is amazing. What do y'all think about it? Who are y'all rooting for? I'm rooting for Carmen and Gancio. Like, those are my two favorites so far. But anybody could really take it because everybody's doing really good so far in this one episode. And I'm excited to see more, y'all. What do y'all think? In the meantime, y'all, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, TikTok, subscribe, like, and comment, and let me know your opinions on the queens and the show. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, y'all.